Welcome back to the lab folks. What we're going to do today, we're going to start on a little project series and the project is a multimeter continuity function response tester. You know, I did a little video on that a little while back. I'll link to that up there and you can see that what we did there uh, using a function generator. But I'm going to go ahead and going to build a standalone unit. A lot of people left comments that they would like to see a project like that. I'm going to do this then in three steps. This first step here today, we're going to be looking at the components we're going to be using and the basic design. The second step would be testing out the software. So in, in the meantime, I'm going to develop the software and I'm going to test it out. We're going to test it out on a prototype. So we'll be building up a prototype and I'll show you what I'm going to build that up on. And then the final episode is going to be, we're going to actually build the thing itself. And I'm going to order up PCBs from JCL PCB, and we'll build one up and test it out too. And then I'll make all the files for this available to you guys to be able to download them from the description. So let's get started here with what we're going to do. So I'm going to use this, this display here. I've got a bunch of these. These are left over from my, my little store I had a few years back. And these are little uh, LCD displays based on uh, what was available in the Nokia 5100 and 5010 cell phones. I think there was another model had them as well. They've got a little spy interface on them, but it's a write only. It's very easy to hook these things up. You know, you've got VCC ground, we've got uh, a backlight, and we've got a clock, data in. DC, this pin here, decides whether the data in is going to be data or command chip enable and reset. A very simple to interface to. And what I'm going to drive that with is a pickaxe 20M2. Now I kind of have a soft spot in my heart for pickaxe. They're pretty easy to deal with. They're very, very low learning curve to get up and running with these things. And a lot quicker and easier for me anyway to work with than Arduino. Now in the future, this one's going to be very basic. It's just going to have basically a pulse time that you can adjust up and down. From my experience with the chip, we're only gonna get from about 13 microseconds all the way up to about 310 milliseconds. Anything that responds to 30 microseconds is a superstar meter. Anything that uh, can't respond to 310 milliseconds is pretty bad. And I do have a couple of meters around that won't actually. Uh, I guess you'll get to see them someday. But 310 milliseconds, think about it, that's a third of a second. So if you're sitting there, you make contact and you're going beep, that's, that's a long time. So you can't basically, you can't go around like this. You have to wait at least a third of a second on each pin before you go on. And that, that could be very tedious. So that, that wouldn't be a great meter. And uh, to build a prototype, I'm gonna do, got one of these little boards and put it on top of this. Now this thing here, it will take the microcontroller in here. It's like, it was my version of the Arduino for the pickaxe chip. I, this is also a part of my story. I, I designed this thing. And these little boards, I've designed these little boards to go on there to be little prototype boards. So they'll pop in there like this and I can mount the display, you know, something like this and connect up to one of the ports. And uh, we'll mount a couple of switches on here for up and down. So we've got these kinds of switches here, these little tactile push button switches. So I can put a couple of those over here and that's it, that's all I really need. And a MOSFET, of course, one of these little 2N7000s. So that'll come over here somewhere. And then I'll have, you know, like little traces here I can connect up to so we can actually test the thing out, test the software out anyway. And then I'll have another display for the final version too. So I got, I think I have enough parts in here to do both the final version, except for the, a couple more of these switches. I need a couple more of these switches. The final version and the prototype because uh, a lot of the parts that you will see in the design upstairs, a lot of the parts are already on this, such as the programming interface and a couple of other little components too. And uh, well, that's it. So that's what we're going to do. And uh, yeah, I have all the components ready here. And so let me take you upstairs to the office and I'll show you the design I came up with and the layout for it. And I'd love to hear your comments about what I'm doing and whether or not you'd like to see more in the future. For instance, a Arduino based one that will have a little bit more um, bells and whistles on it. I don't personally think that that's necessary, but anyway, let's go up, have a look at the design. Okay, folks. So here is the very, very simple circuit that we have to uh, implement this DMM continuity response tester. Like I say, it's going to be a minimalist design. 
So basically we have just the power coming in here and we have some bypass capacitors and this jack here along with this 10k 22k and this 180 ohm resistor uh, compromise the standard programming interface for a pickaxe microcontroller we have our pickaxe here and i've thrown in a couple of test points here and there we'll see those in the final version and i've got a, a switch up a switch down we'll detect them going to zero these pins are being pulled up to 5 volts, and uh, I've got those going into port B6 and port B7. And then I've got port C here handling the LCD. Now, the controls going to the LCD, we've got reset, we've got chip enable, we've got data command, data in, clock, VCC, backlight, and ground. So, and I've got a 2.2K resistor coming in to power the backlight. Unfortunately, on these uh, particular displays, and you'll see that uh, in the next episode, I don't know why, but they had a blue black light on them, which is really weird. Because I remember my phones, like I said, I had a 5100 and a 5110, and both of them had a soft white black light on them. They didn't have blue, so maybe that's why these ones were rejected. I think all of these displays are like seconds or rejects, so that's why we got them really, really cheap back in the day. I you know, picked up a couple of dozen of them for next to nothing. I think that you can still get them today. I don't know if they're the same reject parts from Nokia or if they're new parts from whoever the manufacturer is, but uh, you could still get them today. And then coming out of B0, I'm coming down here to this uh, 2N7000 MOSFET, and that is my pulse generator for the meter. And it comes down here to this arrangement of banana plugs. I had to create models for both the banana plugs and for the LCD because nothing quite fit what I was going to do. And you'll see that in the, in the upcoming videos. So what it comes down here is it comes down to this one here. Now normally you would just put a short in here so that it would come right over to DMM plus and DMM minus. So that's where you put your meter in. So you put your meter in, you put the positive side in here and the negative in here. And you set your pulse width and you check your meter. Very simple, very basic. You can uh, increase the pulse width with the up button, decrease the pulse width with the down button. What I've also added in here, though, is a couple of banana plugs that you can put in a decade resistance. That'll, that'll allow you to see what resistance the DMM recognizes as a continuity or as a short. So you just remove the jumper on here and you put in your decade resistance in here and set the different values until it stops responding. And then you know what resistance is, is accepted as a continuous path. Most meters, it's around about 50 ohms, 100 ohms, 25 ohms. I've seen all that in the time, but I think most of them are around about 50 ohms. So that's a little handy feature there. And that's it. That's the entire design. Now let's have a look here at the layout I came up with. This here is my little dog, Reggie. I know many of my viewers here also watch MSI Guy, and he has MSI Puppy or MSI Dog. I'm not copying him. In fact, long before MSI Guy started his channel, I used to put my dog on my PC boards, and it was a different dog. Unfortunately, the, the dog that I used to have then, Ptolemy, he was my Austrian Shepherd, He's passed away many years ago now. So I just decided I would get rid of my corporate logo with the Omega with OMS on it and start using um, Reggie instead. So go, going back to my old way. So don't accuse me of copying Inside Guy, but Inside Dog might have brought back the need for me to do this. Anyway, so let's get on with the, what we're doing here. So here's the programming interface. It's all over here. Here's our bulk capacitor here. And we've got the bypass capacitors close to the chip here and close to the LCD. The LTD takes up this spot here. Our banana plugs are going to these spots. This is our short pin, our 2N7000, and our up and down arrow keys, and our power in. That's it. And this thing is, is pretty small, if I recall correctly. Let me pop up some measurements here. So yeah, it's about it's about 80 millimeters by 80 millimeters, so it's, it's pretty small. It's definitely a palm of the hand sort of thing. And you can tell here, these are a standard uh, 19 millimeters apart. And I can show you that too. Just to be uh, unlike some of the Chinese meter manufacturers who don't like. So 19.05, which is precisely three quarters of an inch. So if we go to the back here, the back is a, an entire ground plane. And yeah, I've sent these off to uh, JLC PCB a couple of days ago. And uh, it looks like they've finished manufacturing them. They're really quick if you don't ask for anything special. 
and they're going to send them back to me. Uh, in fact, they're already on the way. All right, folks, I think I've been rambling on long enough. That's it. We've got the project started and we'll take it to its end and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for coming out. Bye.